Well, hey folks, Jeff Salzman here and welcome to the Daily Evolver. It's April 27th, 2022, and a special welcome to those of you who are joining me live on either Integral Life's YouTube page or the Developmental Politics Facebook page, which is sponsored by the Institute for Cultural Evolution. And thank you to both the Institute for Cultural Evolution and Integral Life for co-sponsoring me. All right, well, today I have one of my favorite and most popular guests back. I only did one uh, episode with him about three and a half years ago, but it was very popular. I still get people commenting on it. And the guest, my guest is Kim Barta. And Kim is, I guess the best term I would use to describe Kim is that he is a developmental psychotherapist. And he's been working with people on the structures of particularly the higher stages of development for over 30 years. He is a partner with his sister, Terry O'Fallon, which many of you know, she's a well-known developmentalist in the integral evolutionary world. And she has, and Kim has been part of this, done a lot of research on the higher stages. And I have been taken by it. They, I, I, I hosted them, I don't know how many years ago, back in maybe eight or nine years ago at the Boulder Integral Center where they did a workshop on their teachings. And I found it to be just really helpful, you know, really uh, unique and accessible in that they would walk you through the various stages of development and just to have their way of looking at it from the inside and the outside and, and sort of feeling the energies and embodying it. And I just think they do terrific work. I had a conversation with Kim yesterday, which I'll share here in a minute. And we talked about these higher stages. We talked about a program he's doing coming up called Shadows and Light, where he will be you know, leading, I think that it's 16 people is the max, through a year long journey of just knowing themselves in terms of these developmental levels that come online and are concluded and transcended and particularly for those people who are interested in, you know, the post postmodern stages. I, I talk a lot about the struggles between postmodernity and modernity and traditionalism and you know, the culture wars and so forth. But I also love looking at what's next. What's the post postmodern? What's the integral stages? What do they look like? What do they feel like? How do we, you know, more intentionally bring them online? Yeah, I, I guess I'd say that, uh, you know, the stages model and the integral model that I usually use, which is, you know, postmodern, modern, traditional, uh, warrior, all that good stuff. It's some different language. Don't worry if it's a little bit confusing. You can find a chart that uh, maps the two of the systems on my site uh, at the original uh, uh, episode with Kim. Just check out, just search Barta, B A R T A on the dailyevolver.com and you'll see a good chart that'll help, but you don't need that. You can just listen to it. I think you'll get the feel of it. I try to keep up with them. So um, here's Kim Barta. And I start by asking Kim, what does he mean by shadow? How would you define shadow, Kim, just to keep us all on the same page here? Yeah, that's a really good question because the, I think the term shadow has really morphed and evolved over the last hundred or so years since Jung coined the term. If you go back to Jung directly, he says shadow is the unconscious that Freud talked about. It's the same thing. But I think in today's- Just the part of your psyche you can't see, you're not aware. Yeah, of. the unconscious is all that is not conscious. And, and that probably includes all your heart rate control and everything, you know? I mean, the whole kit and caboodle. A lot of times in- Today, when people talk about shadow, they're just talking about the distorted shadow elements of personality. Um, and so I, I, don't, I don't have a bone to pick in this argument at all. I don't really care how people look at it, but you know, it's, 
Uh, so, but maybe for the purposes of our discussion, shadow is, um, you know, the unconscious and in particular, the unconscious that, that we could learn something from to make our lives better. Mm -hmm. You, you and I have talked, uh, at length in the past. In fact, we did an episode at Daily yeah. Vault for three and a half years ago mm -hmm. on shadow and light at, I guess, shadow at the higher levels. Yeah. 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 So uh, is that what you're working on now? Is that uh, with the shadow and light group or well, you know, what's the latest you're thinking on that? Yeah, this latest thing is really exciting because what I did last year was I ran a shadow group. Um, what we did was uh, I did a lot of shadow training and then we did a year long deep dive into doing our shadow work in a collective. And it was immensely successful. People just raved about it. Independently, I also was doing um, uh, states and stages work. I did a, a group on, um, on a, a meditations at every developmental level, all the way from 1.0 to 6.5. And that went really well. And some people took it at the same time and they said it was just unbelievable to take them both at the same time. Yeah. But yeah, so what we're doing is we're putting together a full year transformational journey that deals with um, uh, oh, uh, waking up, growing up, cleaning up and showing up mm -hmm. the whole thing. So we got the waking up with the meditations. We have the growing up with meditations at each developmental level and how yeah. you link them. Right. Wow. And then, and then we have the shadow, which we're going to work on shadow and shadow at every developmental level and shadow in our lives. And then the, and then the, um, you know, showing up is the community aspect of this, where we're all doing this in a community, really doing deep dives into both the shadow and the light version of consciousness. And wow. um, it just proves it's going to be, a, I think it's going to be a fantastic course. Yeah. So this is, this would, all be on Zoom? How? Give me the sort of physical, the way it would actually work. Yeah, it's on Zoom, so people can do it from around the world, you know. And so this will be good. We'll get intercultural dynamics going on, all kinds uh -huh. of beautiful aspects. Last time we had people from around the world too, on both the shadow and the light, um, not together because they weren't raised at the same time. But but we did have people that took them at the same time. But yeah, this time they'll be done all, you know, it'll all be integrated into a, mm -hmm. a beautiful integrated dynamic course. So what happens is there's, there's coursework. I have manuals. I have hundreds of pages of manuals in, in shadow and mm -hmm. stuff. People, to people work can with. download that, of course. And download that. And there's workbooks so they can work, they can take the material and then, and apply it to themselves and they do their individual work. Mm-hmm. And then we come into the collective and we do large collective work. We do small collective work, like groups of four, and we do dyad collective work. So we have the wow. individual, the dyad, the quad rad, and like a group of 16. But we don't go bigger than that because we want to keep it really intimate and, and connected. So 16 will be the maximum for this course. 16 is the maximum. Only All 16 right. allowed. Yeah. yeah. Cool. And for how long will it go? It'll go for a full year. A full year and the commitment would be what you do one or two a week or how, how, what do you yeah so what'll happen for the commitment is um uh each each lesson will be presented and then you'll do your individual work around it then you'll meet in a dyad then you'll meet in a quadratic and then you'll meet in the large group and we'll 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 work each lesson and or each meditation or each developmental level, or each shadow, uh, each month in those mm -hmm. in those formats. Mm -hmm. So it's gonna it's gonna be intensive. It's you should plan at a minimum probably mm, three or four hours a week. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So a serious this is a serious transformational. Course. This is a serious transformational course. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So Kim, so you're talking about you know, integrating meditation, the waking up, the showing up. So give me just an example of like what that would look like in a, particularly at the stages where most of the people are going to be. Okay. So let's just say, um, let's just say most people are going to be in fourth person perspective between fourth person perspective and fifth person perspective. I'm guessing, you know, there okay, might be. So this is people. going to be entry integral. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah, got it. Yeah. Great. Yeah. yeah, I think you're right. 
So we're going to, we're targeting that. And, and so what we'll do, let's just say we're um, on 1.5, which is our uh, individual ego active driver. That would be what impulsive or I'm not sure what the colors are. It's like the first person perspective, right? Mm -hmm. A child thing. So we'll be going through what is a, a waking up experience at 1.5 in the toddler age. Mm -hmm. We'll start with the 1.0, like the infant. We'll go, what's a waking up experience as an infant? What's the waking up experience as a toddler all the way up through? Okay, well, <laughs> let me stop you. What's the waking up experience of a toddler that you would do over Zoom with other people? Okay, so for an example, a waking up experience for toddlers is what they're learning to do is be agentive in the world. So what we're looking at is the, the active driver. And what we're looking at is having meditative experiences around autonomy, initiative, follow through, completion and celebration, and fulfilling that entire uh, span out. Now, when we look at the shadow, we go, are we having a shadow on the autonomy? Autonomy is the, my ability to identify my own passion. Mm -hmm. Do I really identify which my own passion? Which is what a toddler does. Which is what a toddler does. They'll stand yeah. on a, naked on a table and dance, right? It's, yeah. just, it's the greatest yeah. thing in the world, yeah. you know, no inhibitions. Right. But if you are chastised for acting on your autonomy, right? then you shut down your autonomy. Now we have a shadow pattern on the autonomy driver. Now they might still have initiative, follow through completion and celebration, but they can't act on their own passion. They only act on somebody else's passion. Mm -hmm. Somebody says, I want you to do this. And they'll, they're on it, right? But they don't have their own autonomy. They don't never dive into their own wow. passion with it. Wow. Right? So, so we're getting really nuanced about the waking right. up and the shadow dynamics. Yeah. So then- uh, so, you know, that's me. Okay. So uh, then, so the <laughs> remedy is, the I, remedy I, then I, is I, I think I meditate on that. I, you, yeah. you uh, guide me, yeah, yeah. you know, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. We do the shadow work around the autonomy. We do the healing around it. How did the, how did the autonomy driver get squashed in our childhood? How can we release that? We're going to look at whether it was an interject, a split ego states wouldn't be a projection in this case. Um, because, uh, and so what we'll, what we'll do is we'll do a healing process around that. We'll, we'll demonstrate or teach healing processes. You can do that. And, and we teach people how to hold space for each other in the collective, mm -hmm. in the different collectives so that that can carry on. And then as that heals then, um, and then in, at the same time, we have the light side meditations that would enhance autonomy, for example, mm -hmm. meditation, which would be for, for instance, yeah. So like um, a meditation to enhance autonomy would be to just breathe for a while and become very aware of your own body and just notice very subtle impulses that, that, that you get excited about something that you would just get excited about for yourself. Really? Yeah. How fabulous. I'm how, excited how right they, now. Yeah. I see you smiling when I said that you started <laughs> twinkling. Uh. Yeah. Just little, little passions arising. And then what we want to do is just nurture them, hold them with love because they were squashed before. We don't want them to get squashed. We want them to be held with love. So we, we get the unconditional loving witness and we hold these little passions, you know, that don't even quite have an impulse yet to act. That's initiative. So we just hold the little passions, the little excitements. Yeah. And then as they grow, they start having an initiative. They have an impulse to initiate. And yeah. then we get to see whether the initiative driver is collapsed too, because some people have a collapsed initiative driver. It's like, they can have my own autonomy, but it's got to be in secret. I'll never share it with anybody. Right? <laughs> That's me too. <laughs> yeah, It's all of us a little bit, right? It is. Yeah. <laughs> so, so then what we want to do is nurture this initiative so that people can have a free, exciting, lively, flowing experience with initiative. You know, like you would see with a healthy child who would be naked standing yeah. on a, on yeah. the table, dancing and singing, you know, yeah. completely uninhibited, completely alive and vivacious. Yeah. <laughs> and this is, this is just the 1.5, right? Just 1.5. So we're working our way all the way up to what, 7.0 or something. <laughs> Well, we'll probably, you know, we'll see how far people go. Yes, on the shadow and light, uh, the, the on the meditation shadow and light. Yeah, we're going to work up to through 6.5. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so 
There's like okay, so I, 100th percent of the population. So fair enough. Most people but, won't even get those meditations, but they will get something out of it because the people that I did before, even though they weren't at those developmental levels, the meditations still were vivacious and alive for people. Well, and I think they cut the first grooves, right? Yeah, they cut the first grooves. Yeah, why not? Why you know, not? Asp aspiration is, we're good, good on aspiration <laughs> That's here. right. So what you're doing is, in, in a way, a... a rebuilding from the ground up a yeah. tune up from the ground up yeah. we're looking at every you know stage and the different dimensions of every stage and just sort of you know lighten them up right that's right yeah that's right that's fantastic <laughs> you got so, it. so give us another couple stops so that was great that one on 1.5 so what yeah. other that was just a little piece of 1.5 right okay, was... not, okay great yeah okay so let's pop to 4.0 yeah. Okay. So at 4.0, we're wanting to move into our deep, authentic self. Mm -hmm. And what we're doing is we've moved. Okay. So from... 4.0 is going to be the pluralist green. Green. This is going to be our green postmodern stage, which a lot of us, you know, integrals, you know, growing out of that. Yeah. We're in post postmodern people. Yeah. So 4.0 is a lovely stage where I think people will be wonderfully welcomed in and, and you will love it because this is about really diving into your deep authentic self. And what we have in third person perspective is we can imagine the future. And, and as we imagine the future, we sometimes get confused between our imagination and the reality. So we think that we're creating, we think a, a great place to actually explain this is getting married. We, <laughs> we don't marry the person we think we marry. Usually we marry the image that we imagine that person to be. And then we live with them for four or five years and we go, oh my gosh, <laughs> mm -hmm. this is not who I thought you were. Why did you change? Well, no, you didn't change. I married my illusion of who you were. And now that I'm discovering who you are, I'm claiming you changed rather than being deeply authentic and saying, oh, wow, I created a vision of the yeah. future of a vision of a person that I'm going to marry. And now I'm waking up to who they really are mm -hmm. and what this relationship really is. And, and what, what, you're do what you're actually doing is waking up to who you really are. Really? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And we get that at fourth person perspective, but we don't get that at third, third person perspective. We're still blaming the other person for changing you, okay. not the that's same great. person. So let me, let me stop you there. Cause that's a good <laughs> one. So that's that move from orange to green, you know, yeah. from modern to postmodern is yeah. it's you. And then at green, we start realizing, wait, it's me too. Or that's right. Me. Yeah. 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 And the way that we get to know the distinction between how much is this my imagining and how much is this you is we get very soft, we quiet down and we listen more and we inquire into what's really going on for the other person and they share in real time and we absorb that in real time. Notice how it affects us. And then we share something back in real time or, well, it could, doesn't have to be real time, but we'll just say mm -hmm. real time now and then they let that in and let that notice how that fits and feels for them and how that alters them and changes it back now what happens is we're working with the reciprocal driver here how do we create an evolutionary relationship right now what i could do is i could bias on the individual side in which case i'm going to share a lot but i'm not going to hear a lot from you <laughs> <laughs> that's me <laughs> me. <laughs> I could also bias on the receptive side where I'm going to hear a lot, but I'm not going to share a lot from me. Yeah, that's actually me. That's actually you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's more. <laughs> right. And so this is the showing up part, right? How do I show up versus just be present, mm -hmm. right? And yeah. both are good. We want to be present and we want to show up. So we're taking a look, is my, is my individual active driver accentuated or is my receptive driver accentuated? Or the other way to look at it in terms of shadow, did my active driver get crunched or did my receptive driver get crunched? My receptive driver got crunched, now I'm just sharing, but I'm not truly receiving because my receptive driver got crunched by shadow. On the other yeah. hand, I might have a really open receptive, but I'm not so comfortable sharing. So my active sharing driver got crunched. Yeah, cool. So what's the practices you do in this area? 
So again, uh, from a from a shadow perspective, then we go into the deep aspect of that, and we look at how it got created, and we tease it apart, and we do the healing process. That's that's a whole. That's what the whole workshop is about: is how to go about doing that. Right? It's more mm -hmm. complex than I can do in a few minutes, but but basically going going in deeply to the place that got hurt. So we might notice that it's crunched, and a three point five solution to that would be: well, I'm just going to be more active then, right? Mm -hmm. but we're not looking at why it was crunched. Okay. I might be able to override it and just be more active, but all that's going to do is bury maybe more a painful part inside of us. Mm -hmm. Right. And it never gets healed then. And it'll come out sideways in another way. Mm -hmm. So we'll go in as we'll go into where that pain was and that pain and suffering. And we'll figure out what was the core lie. What was the lie that led us to believe that in the first place? Hmm. And we're going to pull out that lie like an old weed and we're going to get to a deeper truth. And from mm -hmm. that deeper truth, we'll spontaneously just naturally be more active. We don't have to try to be more active. We just will be more active once that mm -hmm. happens. Wow. Yeah, yeah. It's like you're lighting it up, unclogging it. That's it's, right. Yeah. It, it wants to be there. It's, you know. it's there. It just, just doesn't want to be locked away and it's yeah. done anymore. You know? to, yeah. 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 Wow. Fantastic. So one of the things I really loved about um, your workshop that you did, I don't know, eight, seven, eight years ago, you and Terry, your sister, uh, on stage is at the Boulder Integral Center, mm -hmm. and where I really got a great download of, of and, and how at every stage, you're looking in, you're looking out, there's, you know, you really have, you've humanized it in a way. It's, it's easy, the, the stages are easily inhabited with you. your system. And <laughs> I appreciate that. Yeah, thank you very much, yeah. Jeff. Yeah. That. That feels All right, good. so that's, that, would, that would help us work our way through that. So let, let's look at these higher, more rarefied stages, Kim. Okay. okay. What might you do there? And you know, these this is this is the part that's aspirational to many of us, perhaps. Mm -hmm. So as we move into, well, pick a stage. Which one do you want? Well, let's see here. We've got um, we just did 4.0, right? Mm -hmm. So that's green. So then we want to move into, you know, like a good how about a good solid interval where most of us maybe are in a good day? 4.5? 4.5. Okay, good. At 4.5, what we're looking at in terms of our consciousness is, okay, let's go back to, okay, to describe this, let's go back to 2.0. Remember being a child where at 1.5, what we're doing is if we see a toy, we grab it out of their hand. If they resist, we yank it out of their hand. If they still resist, we hit them over the head to get the toy. We <laughs> want that toy. That toy is what matters to us. <laughs> and then at 2.0, we get theory of mind. Theory of mind is what crosses us into 2.0. And theory of mind, the theory of mind is a term used by developmental psychologists, is, is where we realize, oh, we're not the only consciousness. You have a consciousness too. Mom has a consciousness. Dad has a consciousness. My friend has a consciousness. We all have consciousnesses. Oh my gosh. And this opens up a whole world of friendship and relationship that the 1.5 child has never been able to see. It's a whole universe that they never even knew existed. Wow. Yeah, cool. And so what we do is we move from taking the toy out of somebody's hand to giving the toy to have a friend. Yeah. To sharing, to being nice, to being kind, to engaging in this reciprocity that I talked about at 4.0. Okay. But we're being reciprocal around, you know, how we make rules and how we play. And if you watch children play at 2.0, they are um they are, uh, they'll go, you be the red horse and I'll be the black horse mm -hmm. and you go fly here and, and I'll yes. be able to run as fast as you can fly. And, and they're, they're just making up rules and playing the game as fast as they can. It's fascinating to yes. watch them. Well, I mean, can't we sort of all remember that too? I know. Right. Isn't that alive? <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> and so, but what happens at 2.0 is you also will notice that friendships are together and then they blow apart and then they're together and they blow apart. Think about your first crush. Maybe, you know, I have a crush. Oh, she, he looked at me or she looked at me and oh no, now they're looking at somebody else. Oh no. Oh no. And we're together. We're like intimate for two weeks and now we're blown apart and I'm never going to see them again. 
Well, that's the problem with reciprocity is we get lost in the reciprocity, whether it's good or bad. So if somebody's nasty to me, I might be nasty back just out of a reaction. Right on. Yeah. So, so the this way, is the 2.0 version. This is the 2.0 version. So then you're taking it up to the 4.5. Yeah. Now we're going we're gonna to take it up a tier and go to 4.0. What we 4 can do is we can get lost in 4.0 in the reciprocity and, and we can't look in at the reciprocity. So if I'm lost in reciprocity at 4.0, what am I doing? It's not just with another person, or is it? It's the world at large? or It could be with the world at large. It could be with another person. But remember what the major, one of the major complaints that people have about 4.0 is- And this is green again. This is green, green plus endless five. processing, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Endless processing. Yes, endless processing. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. That fits. <laughs> I'm just stuck in the reciprocity. Oh, we're processing. Oh, we're processing. Yeah. Oh, we're processing. Let's, let's Ten hours later. In. Oh, we're processing. Yeah. Yeah, let's let's get up. everybody. Let's include more people and we're still processing. And nobody's yes. paying attention to where this processing is going. They just trust in the in the processing, yeah. right? Yeah. And, and that's beautiful. We need to. Yeah, have I was going to say, just as integralists, we'd, we'd say, you know, that's progress. That's well, progress. Not being able to do that. That's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. yeah but. but if, but we can four, get stuck there. We can get stuck there and then nothing happens and, and whole corporations can go down the drain because we weren't seeing the bigger vision of how this processing was unfolding. So we do at 4.5 is we, we are in the processing, but then we zoom out and we can watch that processing going on and we go, oh, wow, this processing all feels really good. Uh, we're not meeting our, uh, <laughs> our demands over here that's going to keep us accredited. And now everybody's going to lose their job. (laughs) Okay. So the zoom out allows us to see this bigger picture and then zoom back in and say, hey, while we're processing, one of the things we need to process is how we're going to handle our accreditation because we're missing that piece. You know, so what's the practice here at this stage or what do you, what do you actually do here? Yeah. So here, the meditative practice is to zoom out and just kind of observe the whole situation. And just go, what's happening here? Just just have a a real data observation mode. Go into observer, okay? We talk a lot about the observer, but the observer comes up at every every two developmental levels. So, um, you know, what we're talking about is a 4.5 observer, not a 3.5 observer. Exactly. (laughs) And And I always loved that, uh, you know, just pausing and say, what's going on here? Yeah. I think there's a book where the crows fly around the island. It's Aldous Huxley's book, I- Island. And, oh, yeah. and there are crows flying around saying, attention. 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 <laughs> attention. Yeah. So it's, I always like that. So anyway, so what's going on here from a 4.5 level? Yeah. Which we is sort of entry integral, moving right. post, postmodern. Right. We zoom out. We start looking at the system dynamics and the feedback mechanisms. Yep. Now, 3.5 looks at feedback mechanisms, too, but they're not they don't include the sociocultural, emotional dynamics of the people involved. And the, the upgrade from 3.5 systems understanding and the 4.5 upgrade is that, yeah, we see all the mechanical systems that 3.5 does and all the goals and all of that. But we also see all the relationship, all the emotions, all the concepts that are floating around and how those are shaping the, the culture of this group that's mm-hmm. wrapped up in the reciprocity. And now what we can do is we can drop in an element to say, let's, let's, what happens if we move this reciprocity a little bit north or a little bit southeast so what what happens if we move it a little more in this direction and we can zoom out and then zoom in and have the experience and then zoom out and then zoom in and have the experience zoom out make an assess what needs to be adjusted zoom in make the adjustment there in real life in real time we don't just stay out there right because now we're not embedded in the system right so we zoom out so we can see it and we zoom in and experience it and create an experience that leads to movement in a healthier direction. Yeah. Well, the integral stage is often seen as systemic. That's where you begin to see the system itself, including the system of evolution. That's right. You know. The system of uh, evolution and also the interior systems, all the ego states, how the thoughts affect the emotions, how the emotions affect the impulses, how the impulses affect the emotions, all of these uh, affect each other in this, 
intrasystemic dynamic way yes. that that has a life of its own as well. And if yes. that's unconscious, which it is for most of us most of the time, yeah. uh, we're not aware of the whole system. So if we're just up here observing the external system and we're not observing the internal systems of each person as well as ourselves, we're missing out on the power of 4.5. Yeah. The power and beauty. Yeah, right on. Yeah, so uh, let me guess what the next one is. <laughs> now at this point, I'm seeing my whole system. Mm -hmm. you know, that, and, and I'm seeing that I can act, that it's all online. I can go back. I can do remedial work on any particular part of it. How mm -hmm. fabulous is that, first of all? Yeah. So I become a, a more filled out, you know, whole person. Yeah. Um, so this next stage then, so that we're going to be moving now beyond, um, we're going to be moving into turquoise and, 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 and these higher stages, which to me have, uh, you start including the subtle more intent, intentionally, mm -hmm. sort of spirit, mm -hmm. shamanic, mm -hmm. um, something like that. Yeah. Uh, where, what do you think? Yeah, yeah. Well, what's happening, uh, first of all, as we move into fifth person perspective is the illusion of, of the, the whole subtle tier, what, what stages calls the subtle tier, which is 3.0, 3.5, 4.0, and 4.5. We start seeing a little bit of an illusion in all of that. One of the things we see is how we are making things up just by the way we language things, by the way we operate language, language itself, the mechanisms of our mind itself, uh, we start looking at that, not just the social, intersocial, interest, social dynamics, but how mind itself um, is uh, distorting reality in certain mm. ways. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. So, yeah, yeah tell, tell me more. So now we uh, can. So, the, so that, what, what, what stage are we talking about here then again? 5.0. Yeah. Oh, this is 5.0. Okay, great. Yeah. So this is, let me get, <clears throat> yeah. this is getting into the turquoise. What we call construct aware. Construct aware. Okay, yeah. great. Now to separate that out at 4.0, we become socially construct aware. That's what makes us really excited about shadow because we realize that we were built by the way we were raised and we want to heal that so that we can be fully free and authentic. But at 5.0, we realize how even just the words that we use, the language that we have, not only that, but just the way we, uh, that we ourselves individually are constructing what we perceive to be reality, what we think is reality. And we start moving beyond that even and going, wait a minute. I'm constructing reality. If you think about it in terms of neurobiology, light comes into our eyes and it's just light, but our, bio, our neurobiology needs to transform that into some kind of a structure so that we can recognize it. What we often call that is symbolic, how the symbolic mind, the, the mind makes a symbolic representation of a tree of the tree that you're seeing. Mm -hmm. And the mind makes a symbolic representation of a dog of the dog that you're seeing, so mm -hmm. to speak. And so what we're seeing is how the mind is starting to manufacture the, the template that's not absolutely matching the reality in front of us. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you talk about, uh, you realize that you're constructing reality. And, okay. um, and then at some point, and this, I think I'm here, you know, at, at least at some, I, I get tired of constructing reality. <laughs> I, I, I'm bored with constructing reality. I... <laughs> yeah. So what's, what, what, what's next? Yeah, what's next? Well, then, then we, <laughs> well, well, we can get stuck here. One, one common shadow thing. Well, I think we talked about this on our last interview is that what we can get stuck there is, well, everything's a construct. So don't believe anything. Don't do anything because everything's a construct. I get stuck in these construct. Everything's a construct, but saying everything's a construct is a construct, but saying everything's a construct is a construct is a construct. I know. And they just, Get it spinning and spinning. I'm, I'm and spinning. there with you, brother. Yeah, like a tire in the mud. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so what we do at 5.5 is we start saying, look, it's all constructs. We get we that's a given. We're gonna give that. Okay. But what's the most delightful, wonderful, joyful construct I can create that'll mm. make things beautiful for everything and everybody? Oh. Yeah, huh? Yeah. <laughs> 
Now yeah. it's, that's the healthy version of 5.5. We don't all go there. Sometimes we just go, oh, I'm just going to manufacture some construct and I'm going to, you know, but if we really take time to just go, what's the most beautiful construct? Because the constructs that we create become manifested in life and mm-hmm. then they become experienced by people. Mm-hmm. All right. So here's where my mind goes with that. So you have, you're having a, you're having a dinner party. You're w- mm-hmm. with friends. So yeah. what becomes really interesting is that the realization that everybody's got a construct. Mm-hmm. I got a construct, they got a construct. Yeah. And to what can I do to make these constructs uh, play together and enjoy each other to the max for this right. dinner party? Well, one of the great shamanic uh, wise sayings is, the person who has the largest worldview that can incorporate everybody else's worldview is the wisest shaman. Uh-huh. Yeah. Does that sound familiar to you? Oh, yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. This is 30,000 year old awareness, right? Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah, <laughs> see, there you go. I mean, I'm, I'm with you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's that's always been there. Yeah, you know, some people been. have gusted up to it. That's and, right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, but that's what we're doing then is that, yeah. so that we're holding the various constructs, various worldviews, yeah. uh, yeah. being friendly well, to all of them, want them all right. to be healthy and happy. That's and right. Let's play optimally right now. That's right. Exactly. That's what healthy 5.5 does. Yeah. Wow. So, <laughs> so I, I hate it, but that, that gets boring too, right? I mean, not for me, <laughs> but I'm, I'm good there. Uh, and maybe for the rest of my life. But at some point we move beyond that. So what what might I aspire to? Yeah, well, um, just to bring this down a little bit, I just wanna say beauty and love at every developmental level, right? I don't promote trying to grow to later developmental levels because we know what happens when Hitler grew to a later developmental (laughs) level and he wasn't ready, right? That's always such a good idea. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I always say the first step is, you know, uh, we have waking up and cleaning up, you know, we need to do that. And then the growing up will happen automatically, naturally. Yeah. But what happens so in it? Yeah. So, so uh, 6.0 moves into broader non-dual experiences. So For example, we might have a relationship at 2.0 with a friend, and we might have a relationship at 4.0 with a culture or a context. And at 6.0, we uh, are having relationships with, um, this gets really hard because after 5.0, of course, we know the linguistic mind starts becoming less important right? It, we start seeing the illusion of the linguistic mind. So <clears throat> when I say these things, uh, it probably, you know, will be interpreted on multiple different developmental levels. But we're seeing the relationship between, say, emptiness and fullness itself. What is the relationship of pure emptiness and pure fullness? Not emptiness of or fullness of, but emptiness and fullness itself. What's that relationship? What's the reciprocity going on there? What's the experience? And how do they become non-dualized as an experience, right? How do we become one? Because we become one with our friend, right? And then we become one with a, a like a, a context or like we're really embedded in our context with our friend group at 4.0 and, and the beliefs that we all have and the values that we're, the, the, all of that, we become one with so that. True. And at 6.0, when we're talking about that kind of non-dual experience, it's like, how about I become non-dual with emptiness and fullness simultaneously? Hmm. Wow. So that's some awareness of the, I don't know, the, the, the spark, you know, the, 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 the creativity of the cosmos yeah. that is online yeah. and, and we can actually see that flashing vibrating into form or right. something yeah it's and fascinating it's fail but the, yeah. i mean this is what we're talking about right right yeah yeah, yeah. and out of the void all potential arises yes. right and yeah. it's wow. beautiful to watch that you know like you said sparkling and lightning yeah. in consciousness itself yeah yeah so you'll be working with people 
at at this stage too, right? Did you say yeah. you, you you do consciously yeah. go to this stage? Yeah, six point five, and that's and then, then, then there's another. Did we say seven point oh or? We won't go to seven point oh. No. Okay. All right. I mean, there's almost. I mean. I think maybe we, you know, we, yeah, we don't have enough research to say what we're doing. At okay. Forget now. the research. What do we think goes on there? Just for the record. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that's a better, the better story for Terry to tell, but I think <laughs> I, I can only imagine what she would say, but she's in the middle of researching some of Dan Brown's latest consciousness stuff mm -hmm. and combining it with um, Wilbur and Arobindo and oh, bless um, her heart. I know. She's this is, we're talking Terry O'Fallon. That's know, right. Terry O'Fallon. Yeah. Great figure in the integral scene. Yeah. 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 She's got a, a great course going called The Mind's Eye that she's going to open up again soon, too. And wow. She through Excellent. About mental stages with that. So, so what would Terry say? <laughs> you know, I, boy, I do not want to put words in Terry's mouth. Uh, you really want to hear something. So I'll say something, but I'm going to say it with a lot of, you know, all good. Rain of salt, right? Yep. But I'm going to say that it's going to be something like an awareness where all consciousness is held in a unified space, free of boundaries, but not in a way where the boundaries, the boundaries disappear, but that doesn't mean the information is lost. Because a lot of times when people erase boundaries, they go into emptiness. And I think what happens here is there's a continuum of consciousness from emptiness to fullness and from divisions to non-divisions in a way that the boundaries disappear, but all the information is still present and alive. And that makes it much more fluid and accessible. And so when new information comes in from the outside, it it, um, it vibrates the entire consciousness. So the entire consciousness lights up and receives it at the same time. It doesn't have to come in through one part and then filter down and go through wow. other parts to get. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And, and, it, and it's interesting because when you hear about something, you know, it, this is just some of the experiences that I'm, I'm talking about, but it's interesting because when you hear about things about like a, the big bang, there's the theory of it being a pee and an exploding, right? But then there was another experience that it's two universes that just bumped up, hit each other, and then everything exploded into aliveness. And, and there's a little bit of truth to both of those, I think, yeah. in terms of this type of consciousness, yeah. that it's all there, and, and the bumping up lights everything immediately at the same time, that the Big Bang occurred everywhere simultaneously. Yeah. And at wow. the same time, it was a P, two P's bumping into each other that lit up simultaneously everywhere, but then also expanded into the evolutionary process that we have today. Wow. Yeah. 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 I love that. I mean, information with no boundaries, all arising at the same, not coming in somewhere and go just all there. It's yeah. like, it's like being lived. It's like being, you know. Ex yeah. expressing the whole thing which is yeah. i guess what we're doing yeah yeah so is there a website is there somewhere to go or when yeah. does it start and yeah, you can go to kimbarda.org and i have a free shadow assessment you can go there there's a shadow assessment you can take your shadow assessment and it'll show you whether you got um split ego states interjects or projections and the percentage of which you know mm -hmm. and uh and it's a fun little thing and then there's a free PDF download, you know, and there's a mm -hmm. free video with it. And mm -hmm. then, then if you want, you can just take uh, my entry level courses they are like $59 mm -hmm. and then work your way through if you want, you know, to decide if you want to go into these bigger things, or you can mm -hmm. dive in and save the money now and, but spend big. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? well, uh, do you have a start date? Or are you just sort of gathering it together as we're just launching next... now. So it's when is when we get 16 people, we will start. Okay, great. And as Fair people enough. come on, they will uh, get uh, literature uh, and stuff to start working on their stuff. So they're not sitting in limbo, just waiting. We'll, we'll yeah. start providing access to literature and, and, you know, like I have, 
two full shadow books that are written that are the manuals. So one mm -hmm. is like, they're both, I think they each have, that together they average like 110 pages a piece. So there's over 200 pages of, <clears throat> of, yeah. of shadow written material and then work uh, and then manuals to, to work on. So yeah. you'll have something to get started on while the other members are joining up. Yeah, well, wonderful. And you know, as I said, I, I, I find your stuff and the work you've done with Terry to be uniquely accessible and powerful and it helped me, you know, I, 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 I learned and grew a lot in, yeah. the, in the time I've spent with you guys. So I really yeah. appreciate you. Oh, and we appreciate you too so much, Jeff. You're just, first of all, you're just a spark of wonderful life. And, <laughs> well, and uh, and we had fun having little debates and challenges and challenging each other's thoughts at times and and also just delighting in the in where we come together and it's just been i, I really appreciate you so much yeah what a privilege yeah all right <laughs> well thank you kim barta and um yeah anybody wants to check out kim's work further in this shadow and light course it's kimbarta.org org all right cool thanks kim Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Jeff. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.